You are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson, 2004 Olympian, four-time national judo champion, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, author, speaker, and coach. Hey, good morning. What's going on, man? This is Dr. Roddy Ferguson, 2004 Olympian, four-time national judo champion, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, author, speaker, and coach, and one half of Team Switch On. And I want to come to you this morning and continue my talk on friction points. Um, but before I continue here, I want to make sure that everybody can, can hear me clearly. Seems like... Um, my microphone is on here. I just want to make sure that volume is up and that people can can hear me. All right. So here's what I want to talk about today. There is, man, there's a constant battle that happens internally with us um, on the on the, on the, in the spiritual sense, it's a battle between um, the, the, your flesh side and your spiritual side. Uh, if we look at Freudian psychology, it's a constant battle of the id and the superego, which is balanced out by the, the ego. But what I really want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about, about what we call personal friction points now usually there's a, there's a friction point between you and somebody else that's how you perceive it when you really get down to it though the friction point is really an internal one it's you versus you or you and how you perceive a thing or you based upon who you would like to be or you based upon who you believe that you are like a lot of friction points that we see in our work with um, Switch On is when we challenge people and we hold a mirror up to them, they find out they are not exactly who they thought they were. So to, to not go really, really deep on the, on the spiritual side of the discussion, because that's not what I want to do today. Um, we've done that on other talks. Let's take a, a small ride down the path of Freudian psychology, just so everybody gets an understanding of the friction point as I would like to speak about it this morning. Coffee's almost done. All right. Um, basically, when Freud speaks about the id, the ego, and the superego, not to get into too deep of an academic discussion, the id is who you are at your rawest point. It's who you are in terms of your, I mean, basic hardcore need, sexual desires. Your super ego is who you really want to be, who you see yourself like, who you, what you think you're like. Your, your, the more high, the, the you that chooses the more high ground. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach this regular. The id is where you are at, at, at the gutter. You understand what I'm saying? The id is, that's you in the, in the DMs with the side chick. That's you thinking about low level, <clears throat> walking in the store, taking stuff out because you feel like you're hungry. You should get what you want to get when you want to get it, that type of thing. The, the, the id is... is it's not, it's not, I wouldn't even say it's low. It's just, it's your basic, basic, basic needs and desires, which you, which you push off. Okay. The super ego is where you would like to be if you were walking the more high ground all the time. And the ego is where you play in the middle and you balance out what it is that I should be doing and what it is that I'm not going to do. All right. So with that being said, The ego, you, yourself, where you live and how you live, puts you in a constant state of moral and ethical friction. Many people have a rough time with this particular friction point because <clears throat> they get caught up on 
who am I and who should I be? Who am I and who should I be? I can't relate to all to the <laughs> Of course you can. So this happens a lot of times in life. Most of the time we only categorize it or give it a name when we when we call out a a point in life that we call a mid life crisis. So a midlife crisis happens because you've lived a lot of your life playing on the first nine holes and then you get to hole 9, 10, and 11 and you can actually see the clubhouse and you see it's almost time to take it in and you can feel yourself wearing down. You can see yourself getting tired and you can see there's not a lot of holes left on the play card and now you're thinking, do I need to switch courses, switch clubs, switch caddies? switch drivers, switch putters, switch partners, or switch courses. And a lot of us don't understand that no matter where you go, there you are. And every club that you have in your hand, you put there. And every person on the course that you are playing with you decided to play with them. Every cart that you're driving, you drove. Every caddy who is with you, you selected. And everything that is around you <clears throat> is based upon you. But what we like to do is when we get caught in what we call a have mercy situation, when we have to yell out and say, Lord, have mercy, we start pointing the fingers outward. Now, one of the best business books of all time uh, is a book by Collins called Good to Great. And in that book, they talk about what the great ones do. The great ones never look at a problem and see the people on the outside as causing the problem. The great ones look at the, the great ones look inside and say that the solution to the problem is within me. Now, I had a talk with Coach Arlo uh, about a day or two ago with a client, and he said something that he says on a, on a couple of calls, but it really hit home when I talk about personal friction points today because. He said the, the issue with a problem is that in the egoic mind, when you come up with a problem, you eliminate the solution. That's why people say, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm out. Well, why can't you deal with it anymore? Most problems can be solved through communication, but when you refuse to communicate, then you refuse to solve the problem. A lot of people want to create a problem because they've eliminated solutions. Now, let's just look at this. When I got to Howard University in 1992, the first class that I took was Intro to Engineering. I decided to be a mechanical engineering major, and I was in this class, man. It was almost like 150 people in the class in this auditorium, and we talked about the process of engineering, and engineering at the basic, basic level. And they talked about brainstorming. And they said, in the process of brainstorming, I want you to come up with ideas that you think are outlandish, that you think will will, will be crazy or that, that people would actually make fun of you if you, if you said in a, in a regular meeting or if you said in the classroom when you were in high school. But we need you to brainstorm because we need you to look at all the solutions possible first and don't shoot down anybody's brainstorming. And now when I think about it now, I'm thinking to myself, the engineering process does not look for a problem, nor, did it, nor does it accept that a problem exists. The engineering process brainstorms understanding that every problem that exists in this world has a solution. And somebody is going to find it. Why can't it be me? The friction points that you have in your life occur because there's a constant battle between your lower level gut desires, your id, and your super ego of who you want to be, and your ego of who you are. Your id presents all the options that are available to you. 
your super ego presents the problems with those options based upon societal constructs, based upon who you want to be, based upon who you think you are and what you should do. And your ego handles the friction. Those people who don't handle friction well, they find a way to medicate themselves. They find a way to drink. Some find a way to hurt themselves. And those people who do handle the friction well find a way to move through life. Now, the thing about handling the friction points in life is that you got to understand that you can't handle those friction points on your own. For every great thing that I've done, I've always had coaching. Uh, I've caught, I've found myself in a half mercy situation before. For those of you who know my personal story, why I went through a divorce and I, I had to go to therapy. You know, I, I didn't just go to a, that, um, that pop-up just happened, but that was a great pop-up because that's my, my scripture that came in in the morning. All right. So I had to go to, I had to go to therapy, but that's not my first time going to therapy. When I competed, um, and I was competing and, and training for the Olympic games, I also went to therapy. I had a sports psychologist. You, you need to have someone to sit down and, and talk to because there are a lot of things going on in your life. And the id is always pulling you one way. The super ego wants you to present yourself in another way. And then you have friction. You need coaching. You need mentoring. You need therapy. You need therapeutic modalities that you use. What are some of the therapeutic modalities that I use in my life to handle friction? I use the mat. I use the weight room. I use cardiovascular training. I use walks. I use meditation. I use prayer. I use the help of friends. Now, I will tell you this. You cannot only use those modalities. You need to also sit down and speak with somebody. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, man, everybody's going to the therapy and talking about all this therapy and this therapy bullsmith and blah, blah, blah. The Bible don't sit down. The Bible don't talk about no therapy. I said, of course, the Bible talks about therapy. When you have an issue or problem, the Bible tells you to go seek the elders of the church. Why do you need to seek the elders? You need to seek the elders because time plus experience equals wisdom. So you get wisdom from those people. And then people say, well, I don't, I'm not going to sit down with no, with no pastor. He ain't had no training. And so, well, then find you a church where the people have Christian counseling, Christian-based counseling. Find you a, 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 um, a, a mosque where the people have uh, that type of counseling. Will they, have, will they have that type of base counseling? Find you a synagogue where they have that type of base counseling. Based upon the Judeo-Christian or the Judeo framework. Find someone where they have that type of counseling. If you don't believe that, then find someone, someone else that find the elder in the church which you attend. If you operate in the church of the world, then find you a therapist in the church of the world. Find you an elder to sit down and talk to. If you want the people to hang out in Hialeah, Florida, in Miami, Florida, then what you need to do is you need to go to the to the little um, Cuban coffee shop. You sit down and you talk to one of the the, the old dudes out out there, man, and, and sit down and have you a cup of Cuban coffee, and then you get some wisdom from that church. When we were growing up, you just find you a shade tree. You find some old school dudes under there playing dominoes or checkers. And you sit down and you get the wisdom that is available from that particular church. When you were, when we were small, we used to go to the barbershop and listen to the old heads talk in the barbershop and get some wisdom from that particular church. And those are churches because those are places where people are worshiping. That doesn't mean they're putting a, a God in front of another God, but they're, they're, they're worshiping in, in, in a fashion or a form. That's what they're doing. And they're going there religiously. You go to the grocery store, right? You go to the grocery store religiously. Right. You get your haircut, you get your haircut religiously. You go to football games during the football season, you go religiously. 
You got a lot of religions you practice. You don't want to say that you practice them. And all of them have wisdom in them in their own containers. Go and get the wisdom by speaking with somebody who has more time and more experience than you. This will help you move through life. This will lessen the friction. Much of the friction happens. I'm going to get ready to close now. Much of the friction happens because you are out here trying to do things on your own. The friction happens because you believe that you can do it better on your own. You cannot do it better on your own. Your id tells you you can do it on your own. I don't need nobody. And then what's crazy, the super ego says, I am so good, I can get this done. I will make it happen no matter what. And both things are incorrect. And the balance in between the two, the ego is saying, man, you, you, could, you can't do this. Can, can you do it by yourself? I mean, wait, hold on. Your super ego says you're so good you can do it by yourself. And then your ears say, I don't need no new friends. So how do you balance, I can do it by myself, and I don't need no help. You balance it with the reality of things in my life aren't getting done the way that I need them to get done. So clearly, me thinking that I can do it all by myself and clearly me thinking that I don't need anybody is not helping me get where I need to go. This brings you to the situation where you find yourself stuck. Stuck also is a friction point. You are stuck. Some of you are stuck financially. Some of you are stuck in relationships. Some of you are stuck spiritually. Some of you are stuck personally. Some of you are stuck in your health and wellness. Some of you are stuck at a certain weight. And in the switch on process, what we do is we, we allow people, we attack it at the, at the mouth gate with the diet. We allow people to get to, to a sticking point. They say, man, I'm stuck at 235. I'm stuck at 237. I'm stuck at 240. I'm stuck at 162. I'm stuck at one. I'm stuck at this weight and the weight won't move. I'm stuck. Are you really stuck? Or do your behaviors have you stuck? Are you really stuck? Or is it that you're not listening? Are you really stuck? Or is it that you're not utilizing the help that you've invested in? Or not going to get help? you're not you're not stuck you can get on the internet in, internet right now today and you could you could look at i mean figure competitors fitness competitors bodybuilders like you, you're not stuck until you get yourself down to about three four percent body fat you're not stuck you are not stuck what you are doing is you're lying you're cheating you're snacking and you're having a friction point of the id of I eat what I want to eat and the super ego is I'm eating well, I'm, I'm doing better than I've been doing. And then your ego, which is, man, this is where I'm at. I ain't trying to tell these people where I'm at. I'm just going to get out of this program and go on about my business. I, I lost enough weight. I'm good to go. Instead of addressing your friction point. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 is a good read. One of my favorite parts is the part that says two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Then it speaks about walking by yourself and being alone. Two are better than one. If you're going through life and you're having a problem or an issue, to help you get through your friction point or your stopping point, you need some help. 
as I close, I'm going to say this. If you've ever been, if you've ever been doing any bench press before, you can handle the weight. All right. And, and in the beginning ranges, sometimes when the thing is really, really heavy, you ask for a lift off. You say, may I have a lift off? Boom. And you get the lift off. And when you get the lift off, the first thing that you say is, I got it. Boom. I, hey man, I don't really need, I don't really need Rallo them help. I just need them to give me some seed money so I can get this business up and running. Then when I get it up and running, I'm, I'll be good. Right, 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 right. Don't worry about the taxes. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the marketing. Don't worry about the, the turning the profit from the operation. Yeah, don't worry about the twos and fews. Don't worry about getting the cleaning staff. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about the rest of that stuff. All you need is a lift off. Boom. So you get the weight off. Boom. Lift off. I got it. I got it. In the beginning, when it's going down, it's going down easy. It's no problem. Everything going down easy. Easy. Boy, it's looking good. It's looking good. And it's 50% of the way done. You go all the way down. You touch your chest. Boom. And you head it on the way up. It's about two and a half to three inches off of your chest. There's this point called the sticking point. Here's where your elbows start. They start shaking. You start doing the hully gully, feet pressing in the ground, butt starting to come off the bench. Because now the weight of your situation is getting ready to collapse on your neck. And what you say is, Because you need some help. And then when the person gets you past that sticking point, what you say? I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, you didn't have it. You didn't have it when you started. You didn't have it when you finished. You didn't have it at all. And a bad spotter when you're young will take their hands off the bar during that process. And a good spotter will keep their hands on the bar during the whole process because they know how much weight you can handle. When you're in the gym, having a spotter who is seasoned and who knows how much you can handle and who's been watching you and watching you lift and understands the sticking points and understands the danger of the lift off and taking their hands off the bar and understands all these particular things, can save you a lot of time and a lot of injury and help you actually get stronger and move through your friction point. But if you go in that weight room and you try to do it on your own or perceptively you try to mind screw yourself that you can because all you think you need is a lift off, you're going to find yourself in what we call a have mercy situation when you're deep inside of your friction point and you'll be screaming for help and there will be nobody around. If there's one thing that you should understand about personal friction points today is that in the relationship of the id, the ego, and the superego, where the id is your low-level gutter desires and your super ego is who you want to be and your ego is exactly where you are just understand that for you to work through life you're going to need some help get the help now <clears throat> One of my favorite writers is actually a singer. And you have to go through and you have to read some of his lyrics. Because listening to him sing is really not beneficial to the ear. <laughs> but his lyrics, deep. Anytime that we speak, the words that we provide are traveling via waves through the air. And 
And the Bible says you need to be careful what you say and you need to be careful what you think because sometimes your thought can go forth and a bird can take your thought and deliver it. Now, people laugh at that, but then they'll read the secret and, 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 and agree that thoughts are things. And then we can say, as a man thinketh, so is he. So there's, there has to be something on the metaphysical side or the spiritual side that links thought to things and thought to reality and thought to work and thought to behaviors and speaking to, to life and speaking to death, etc. But all these things are going out in the air. And what I'm giving you is also going through the air. And Bob Dylan said, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. And if you didn't get it, then he said it again. The answer is blowing in the wind. If you haven't read the lyrics of that song before, I would encourage you right now today, after you get off of this particular live, to look up the song by Bob Dylan when he speaks about the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. You've received some answers today about two are better than one. You've received some answers today about getting some help. You've received some answers today that you can't do it alone. You've received some answers today about thinking that you don't need anyone. You've received some answers today about thinking that you could do things all by yourself. You've received some answers today about the concomitant relationship between the ego and the superego and the thread that holds them together being the ego. You've received some answers. The answers have come to you. They've come through the airwaves. You've received them. The answers have come through the wind. The question that I have for you is, will you get some of the help that you need and will you book a call today? The call is 100% free. You go to www dot let's get on a call dot com book a call with coach all and I do the call identify some of the friction points choose how you want to handle those friction points and then make a plan of action for yourself to start knocking down some of those friction points move towards who you want to be and start doing that today hey man this is Dr. Ferguson man I love you, but God loves you best. If you don't do anything else, make sure you plug in, power up, and get your switch on. Take care and have a super fantastic day. And please visit www.